Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today on Can Your Lights Take the Heat? My name is Lori Armstrong and I'll be your moderator. Um, before we get started today, I'm just going to go through a few housekeeping items. On the screen in front of you, you should be seeing several widgets uh, within your browser. On the top left is the Q&A widget. Feel free to type a question at any time and we'll answer as many as we can during the session and any remaining questions will be answered via email afterwards. Below that widget is our speaker's bio and contact information. The big one in the center is where the presentation itself will show up. Finally, left of the slides is a survey. If you have to jump off early, please take a moment to answer those questions as we really value your feedback. A recording of this webinar will be available before the end of the day, and you'll receive an email tomorrow with a direct link. So I think that covers the basic housekeeping, uh, so let's get right to it. Today's presenter is Tiago Corey. Tiago is the Vertical Marketing Leader for the Acuity Brands Industrial Group. He has more than 15 years of work experience in technology, manufacturing, and logistics, and holds an MBA from Cornell University. It's my pleasure to introduce Tiago. Thank you very much, Lori, and a special thank you to all the customers that took time out of their busy schedules to join our webinar today. The topic of our discussion will be lighting and controls for demanding environments. And by that, I'm referring to steel mills, pulp and paper mills, chemical plants, oil and gas platforms, and any industrial facility that has applications that generate excessive heat, dust, or chemical components. And why is this topic so relevant today? Well, because as you know, these environments can be very unforgiving. From a safety perspective, from a cost perspective, we are all seeing a live events happening this week as a result of the damage done by Hurricane Harvey and how that affected chemical plants in Texas and the, the impacts that that can have in the environment. So this is a very relevant topic. These are very demanding environments. And what I'm about to convey to you is that a proper LED and controls upgrade to your facility will not only make it safer and more pleasant to work at, but it will also allow you to save thousands of dollars in energy costs every month. So thank you very much again for joining. It is a true pleasure to have you today, and let's get started. Our agenda is structured in three main sections. In the first part of the webinar, I will highlight some of the most pressing challenges of operating demanding facilities and share how the right LED lighting technology can help you mitigate these challenges. The second part of the webinar will be very product focused. I will present you with one of our best selling LED high base for the many environments and I will dissect it going over the design, materials, electronic components, certifications and everything else that makes a huge difference when you are evaluating lights for harsh environments. And then on the last part of the webinar, I will share some advanced lighting and controls techniques that can be implemented in harsh environments and extended throughout your entire facility to optimize your operational controls and return on investment. In this chart, we have some of the most pressing challenges of operating the many facilities. These sites are usually very large. They often operate with two or three shifts. They're populated with hundreds or even thousands of employees in any given day. And the heavy machinery utilized in the productive processes can generate high ambient temperatures, hazardous chemical gases, high voltage electrical discharges, and other safety risks. So in this context, low illumination levels is just bad for business. I mean, having to work with high ambient temperatures, three shifts, 365 days of the year is already a tough job on its own, but operating these facilities with low illumination levels is just bad, and you know, it just makes things even more dangerous. And I have been in some of these sites, and depending on the area they're in, you can barely see what you're stepping on. So, so this is a tough problem. Unfortunately, it happens often. Second, the fact that the light fixtures often have to be mounted at very high ceilings makes things even more complicated transforming a simple replacement of an HID high bay into a potential safety liability. Third, some of these industries have been hit very hard. You know, I'm talking about lower commodity prices, talking about competition 
with imports that are manufactured in countries that do not abide to our labor standards and flood our markets with cheap, low-quality products. And all these dynamics just puts budgets and capital under tremendous constraint. So it's not only a safety issue and a safety risk, but there is the pressure on our budgets too. And in this context, maintenance routines are not only risky, but they can cost thousands of dollars. You know, sometimes you have to bring an OSHA supervisor and use a lift and take your time and stop traffic in a given area, and these things add up. So you end up wasting money, and you end up wasting time that could be put to work in more productive areas. Lastly, as these HID lamp replacements become more often, you know, it's just a matter of time before you end up incurring some production delay as a result of all this inconveniences in your facility. So in essence, these are very unforgiving environments, not only from a safety perspective, but also from a cost perspective. And as leaders in these industries, it is our job to put the infrastructure in place that minimizes unnecessary risks and optimizes our operational costs. Let's take a look at a real life example. This is an image from a productive process in a steel mill of one of our key customers, Nucor Yamato Steel in Arkansas. For those not familiar with this process, this is an electric arc furnace, and it is used to melt iron and steel scrap and produce steel. In this process, a three-phase electrical current of approximately 60 megavolt amps, it's a lot of electricity, is applied to the material using giant electrodes and this process ends up generating 5,000 Fahrenheit of heat to melt the iron. Now, if you have never seen this process in person, I'll tell you, it looks like a volcano. Now, take a close look at the top part of the image, and you will see the height at which the lights are mounted in these facilities. Now, they're high, and you cannot install a furnace in a single-story building. This is just the nature of this business. Now, Look what is underneath the lights. I mean, an accident replacing these lights could have tragic consequences just because of the place where the lights are placed and the altitude and what's underneath them. So again, changing light fixtures in an environment like this is not a trivial task. And the cost of a simple fixture replacement can add up to $1,500 when you factor in the cost of renting or purchasing a lift, the hourly cost of an OSHA supervisor that has to be on site, and the interruption of passage to certain areas of the facility. So all these things add up. Not only that, replacing the fixture generates unnecessary risk for the maintenance crew that has to be lifted all the way to the ceiling to replace these HID fixtures. And these are things that I encourage you to factor in in your decision-making process because if you install the proper LED technology, it will endure over 100,000 hours without the need of maintenance. Speaking of safety, let's take a look at this chart published by the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics. As you can see in the slide, falls, slips, and trips are classified as the second highest reason for fatal occupational injuries in the United States. If you exclude roadway accidents, which occur outside of company premises, false trips and slips are actually the highest reason for fatal occupational injuries in the United States happening inside the facility of companies. So this is a very serious problem, and it happens every day, unfortunately. Now, what I find interesting is that these are the types of accidents that the less experienced employees sometimes think that it's just never going to happen to them until they happen. And if you have been as long as I have been around and you have seen one of this, you know that these are just tragic to see. They're heartbreaking. I mean, any employee accident is a sad event, especially a fatal one. So, in other words, when you upgrade to LED, you're not only delivering a more pleasant work environment, but you are also increase your employees' engagement and you will provide them with a safer work environment. And you will avoid your maintenance crew from having to go in very high ceiling altitudes and change these HID fixtures which keep failing all the time. So it's just something that is a quick fix and it will deliver several benefits for your facility. Let's take a look at another real-life example. People say that an image is worth a thousand words, and I definitely agree in this case. In the left side of the chart, you have 
a facility that we upgraded to LED before the upgrade. And in the middle picture, you have the same facility after the upgrade. And the difference is as night and day. You know, LED delivers a much better environment. It's clear, safe, clean, it's engaging. And to the left side of the chart, you can see uh, the, the yellowish characteristic of an HID illumination. It's just, it just feels like a tunnel. Not only that, when you take a look at the, the top part of the chart, close to the ceiling, you can see that several of the HID lamps have, had already failed in this facility, despite the fact that they had been installed for less than five years. The commentary to the right was delivered by the executive sponsor of the project, and I guess it speaks for itself. So, in essence, a, an upgrade to LED would not only deliver a much better work environment for your employees, but it will also save you energy, and it, quite frankly, it's just a no-brainer. I mean, it's, it's one of the best investments you can do for your facility and for your crew. Another benefit from upgrading to LED comes from avoiding the unnecessary production delays that can occur as a result of unplanned maintenance routines. In the example above, I quantify the value of a 15-minute production delay for a basic oxygen furnace, and you can see it's quite substantial. Now, if you look at other industries like oil and gas, chemical plants, pulp and paper, automotive, you will notice the same pattern. These are capital-intensive industries, and every minute loss can cost thousands of dollars. So if you're managing one of these facilities and you can save yourself the distraction of having to coordinate lighting replacement every other week or every other month, in the end of the year you will have saved yourself a lot of time and quite a few unnecessary production delays. So this time we'll be much better invested in productive processes that can benefit your employer. Again, just another benefit of upgrading to LED. So. To summarize the benefits of upgrading to LED, you have enhanced safety benefits that come from the high quality lighting that creates a safer work environment for your employees that allow them, allows them to fulfill their, their daily duties with precision and confidence. Uh, LED upgrades eliminate the risk for unnecessary HID fixture replacements that are quite frequent. For those who have HID in their facilities, they know that. And you also have the enhanced cost controls that are so critical in today's competitive business environment. So you reduce the lighting energy spend by up to 65%. You protect your budget from uh, unscheduled maintenance routines. And you reduce the set chances of unnecessary production delays that can result as uh, a consequence of this unplanned maintenance routines. All right, so in the first section of the webinar, we went over the safety and operational efficiency benefits that an LED upgrade will bring to your facility. Now, here comes the tricky part, selecting the right technology for demanding environments. And that is very tricky because not all lights can take the heat. Heat is detrimental to electronic components. So selecting the correct LED high bay makes all the difference in the world. You know, sometimes these fixtures they can look just the same from outside, or the marketing collaterals can look, you know, very enticing. But pay attention, my friends, because getting it right the first time is important. This sometimes can be substantial investments, and you want to make sure that you get what you're paying for. All right, let's get started with a quick anecdote. Suppose that you were to go on a three-day off-road competition through some very rough terrain. Which of the two cars would you prefer to buy? Well, the Hummer, of course, it is more expensive, yes, but it will get you there safe and sound without the need for fixes and any other issues along the way. So this is the same logic when we're, uh, that we expect you to apply when you're evaluating lights for your demanding environment. There are cheaper options out there, but they will probably not withstand as time goes by and you will have to replace them and that might end up being more expensive than getting the right light from the start. So let's see how it works. In the same way that cars engineered for rough terrain look different from conventional vehicles, light fixtures designed for heavy and demanding applications have a very distinctive look. Let's use the Fusion as an example to illustrate this concept. Diffusion is the best performing light for high ambient temperature applications in the market. 
period. If there is a light that can take the heat, this is the one. If I had to compare the Fusion to a car, well, it wouldn't be a car. I would have to compare it to a tank, like an M18 Hellcat destroyer tank. This fixture packs 45,000 lumens. It is rated IP65, which means that it is protected from dust ingress and it can resist water sprayed from any direction. You might not be able to notice looking at your screen, but this fixture has a diameter of 21 and a half inches and it weighs 38 pounds of pure top quality components. In addition, and equally important, the fusion is engineered, tested, and rated to operate at high ambient temperature. And that is very important because as it happens with many electronic devices, excessive heat can shorten the life of the drivers and can also compromise the quality of illumination from the LED boards if those components are not built to take the heat. Now, let's take a look at the engineering and technology that makes these the best performing LED high bay for high ambient temperatures in the marketplace. The housing of the LED fixture is made of best quality cast aluminum that provides superior thermal conductivity compared to steel. It has heat dissipating fins and a heat sink that keeps the fins unclogged in the event that something got stuck in there. If you look at the thermal picture to the right, you'll see that the driver is housed elevated as compared to the LED boards and at the distance, which keeps the, hink, which keeps the heat far away from the LED boards and keeps the flow of heat upwards as it should. And it has a central ventilation system that drives airflow up and over the fins to dissipate the heat quickly. This light fixture is rated to operate at 149 degrees Fahrenheit for over 100,000 hours. Now, not everything is visible to the naked eye. Be careful. I have seen a few mocks out there. I have seen a few high bays that look similar to our Fusion, but they are not. Competitors, less credible competitors, and sometimes, unfortunately, try to replicate the design of a fixture, but in reality, they, they, they do not work as the fusion. So while looking at these external characteristics will help you to eliminate 90% of the options available in the market, you have to look even further to make sure that you're really getting a sturdy and heat-proof LED high bay. I'm talking about the amount of copper that goes in the circuit board, the positioning of the different circuit boards, you know, the quality of the traces that connect the components to each other. So, I mean, how can you find out about those things? You can't just open a light fixture and inspect it with a microscope, right? So the, the, the way here is to make, make sure that you check the specification sheets and the official ratings by established third-party agencies that should come with a credible fixture. Let's take a look into that. This is one of the characteristics that sets the Hall of Fame brand apart when it comes to thermal outperformance. They actually test their products under different temperatures and conditions and publish the longevity of the light fixtures in the specification sheets of each product. Take a look at the spec sheets to the left of the screen. That's the Fusion PHC. And you will see that this fixture is rated to operate at 100,000 hours at 55 degrees Celsius, and uh, that is 131 Fahrenheit, and still deliver 91% of its rated lumen output after that. So that is basically operating for 11 years at 131 degrees Fahrenheit and still delivering 91% of the lumen output at the end of that period. So this is just true thermal outperformance. And it is important to mention that because this type of durability cannot be replicated by any fixture out there. So as you are evaluating different alternatives alternatives of LED high bays, you will find some that might cost $100 and others cost $500. And they might even look similar at first sight. But let me tell you, they are not. It takes a lot of high quality components and technology to be able to provide you with such a performance. 
Lastly, if you look at the spec sheets to the right, you will see that this competitor product does not even mention the ambient temperatures and the performance of the fixture uh, under different conditions. So if you're being served with a product like this, I advise you to be careful because the chances are that this product has not been engineered, designed, and tested to operate under harsh environments, and it will most likely fail you in the medium or long term. Speaking about performance, thermal cutback is a serious issue that affects standard lights in high ambient temperatures because, as we said earlier in this webinar, heat is detrimental to electronic components. So in this regard, the fusion will not only endure the test of time, but it will also deliver excellent lumen performance when exposed to high ambient temperatures, as shown in the table above. Equally important is the fact that the fusion is UL and CSA listed to perform at 65 degrees Celsius. In other words, this product has been tested and rated by the most credible third parties in the market. And lastly, to close the topic of thermal performance, these are the pictures of a couple of fusions PHZ that we received from a customer. A customer that had an incident in his facility that caught on fire and burned 80% of the entire plant. Very sad incident. Feel very sorry for that. Now the Hall of Fame team brought the fusions in and replaced some of the electrical cords that melted with the heat and bam, the fusions came back to life and producing some serious light output. So I hope that none of you ever have this type of accident in your facilities, but one thing is for sure, this light can take the heat. Now the thermal characteristics described in the previous charts are important, but they would be worthless if the fixture could not withstand other agents, such as dust, chemical components, corrosion, and humidity. To this regard, the materials used in the Fusion PHZ are certainly the best one can get. The exterior parts are made of super durable aluminum and protected by a zinc infused thermoset powder for superior resistance to corrosion. Also, the aluminum used in the housing has very low copper content which makes it extremely durable to hot and dirty environments. So using these high quality materials is critical because these lights are designed to last for 10 years or more, so the enclosure has to resist to corrosion to keep the thermal properties of the fixture across the years. Okay, in the previous charts we talked about thermal performance and the resilience of light fixtures in demanding environments. Now we're going to switch the focus towards the optical performance of the light fixtures in demanding facilities. Now when you're evaluating a light fixture for an upgrade to, to better illuminate your factory or your plant, you want to make sure that the lenses and the LED boards, the distribution is symmetric and that it will provide you and your crew with a very symmetric and effective distribution of light because you don't want to waste light and, le and electricity in any environment, right? So let me start by telling you that the issue of poor lighting distribution is the core problem that led two scientists to conceive the idea of making a light globe of crystal glass back in 1896. That might sound like a trivial thing today in 2017, but you have to keep in mind that Prismatic technology was not common in those days. So in this slide, you can see the first page of the patent filled by these two scientists back in 1896 for their new light lenses. And ever since that day, Hall of Fame grew to become a leading provider of industrial lighting with high optical performance or optical outperformance. So this is a company that has the credibility to offer a fixture that will last for a decade just because they have been leading this business for over 100 years. Okay, let's talk about different materials used in light lenses and which one you want to pick for your demanding environment. In the picture to the left, you can see that acrylic and polycarbonate lenses you know, might do well for a standard operating environment or an office, but when exposed to demanding applications that generate heat and chemical components, they usually tend to become yellowish with the years and even crack. So this is not the recommended material for a harsh environment. 
On the other hand, you can see that borosilicate glass delivers a much better performance in several factors. Just because it is electrically neutral, so it does not attract dirt, which you know tends to be frequent in certain environments, and because it does not attract dirt, the lights shine and perform much better. Uh, obviously, it is also low maintenance because of that characteristic. It is high impact resistant, so it, it can take a lot more. It is thermally stable, shock resistant, it's not affected by UV, so if it is installed in an outdoor area where you have sun, it will resist very well Two, it is resistant to most chemicals, which is which is obviously an important factor when you are in a harsh environment. It provides you with a precise optical control and a light that is strong but still ple pleasant to the eye because of the glare reduction capacity of these materials. So, in essence, if you're looking for lights for a demanding environment, I strongly, uh, you know, recommend you to look at lenses that have borosilicate glass just because in the long run they'll provide you with a much better quality of light and value. So as a consumer you might be asking yourself, how can I know if the lights that I'm evaluating will give me a good lighting distribution? And first things first, if you're looking at lights from a credible manufacturer, they should have provided you with a lighting distribution chart like the ones to the left of the screen. And you can see there to the left the two different wide distribution uh, charts. The far left one which resembles a circle is from a competitor of ours and you can see that that distribution kind of throws light all over the place. I, I do not find that to be an optimal distribution if you're looking at wide lenses. On the other hand, the distribution chart from the Fusion has a, a shape that resembles a bat wing. And that is good, in my opinion, for a wide lens distribution just because you're not wasting up light as in the one that resembles a circle. Now, if you look at the right side of the screen with the two pictures, that's a before and after real life case from one of our customers. And the interesting fact there is that we were already replacing LED lights. So in other words, the two pictures to the right were rooms with, uh, were the same room with LED lights to it. But the difference is that the Petrolux, which was the fixture used in that case, provided them with a much better vertical illumination that is what was required in that chart to operate the industrial controls that are in the wall of that facility. So, in essence, lighting distribution is very important because if you get the right fixture with the right lenses and that lenses is configured appropriately to illuminate the task that must be performed in a given environment, that will deliver your crew with a much better lighting quality to, the, to the perform what they're supposed to perform and without wasting precious light. One last factor to take into account is the luminary dirt depreciation level. If the fixture is not designed, sealed, and rated to prevent the entrance of external agents, or if the materials used in the construction actually attract dust, it will gradually accumulate dirt, and that will sacrifice the lumen output of the fixture along the years. So, if you're selecting light fixtures for heavy and demanding environments, I strongly encourage you to select fixtures that are rated IP and there are several IP classifications. They're all available online, so you can use those to make a selection or you can consult an expert if you feel more comfortable doing so, but just make sure to select a fixture that is properly sealed and rated to operate and preserve its lumen output in the environment that you're planning to install it. In the second part of the webinar, we went over some technical characteristics that should help you select the best LED lights for your demanding applications. Now, in the last part of the webinar, I will share with you some very interesting benefits that you can get from upgrading your entire site to LED and some lighting and control strategies that will take your LED upgrade project to the next level. Okay, so if you're like me or like the most interesting man in the world, you're busy. You have a lot of responsibilities at work. You have external interests that you pursue on your time off the company. So you don't have any reason to do the same thing twice. I mean, an LED upgrade project should take you considerable time in doing research and selecting the vendors. So if you're going to do it, do it right. Do it at once in the first time and get the full benefits of an entire facility upgrade. Let me show you what those benefits are.
So here are the benefits of upgrading your entire facility to LED. First, you'll get incremental lighting energy savings of 10 to 40%. And I'm sure everyone in this call likes to save energy. It's good for the environment. It's good for your budget. Second, your offices will look better. Your external, external areas will look safer. And that is ideal for three shift operations. It looks good when you bring customers to your site. Third, you can take advantage of very attractive utility rebates that are available in most U.S. states. And on the next chart, we will serve a dynamic poll. So if you need help connecting with an expert, just click yes, and we'll get you in touch with a utility rebate expert in your area that will help you take advantage of those. And lastly, it should allow you to negotiate additional discounts for the entire project. So there's a whole lot of benefits of doing an entire LED upgrade. If you're planning an LED upgrade project and you would like to learn more or take advantage of local utility rebates, but you're not familiar with those, just click yes on your screen and we will put you in contact with a local expert that will help you with this process. Let's take a look at a real life example. Parking lots are what I like to call low hanging fruit in an LED upgrade project. The replacement of the HID lamps is fairly uncomplicated. The energy savings potential for a simple replacement of a 400 watt or 1000 watt HID lamp can achieve 78% if you have dimming capabilities in the outdoor areas, and that results in a payback period of less than two years. So it's really attractive value proposition. Most importantly, a well illuminated parking lot with a good security system added to it is safer for your employees. So you can actually reduce your your energy spend and use those savings to fund an outdoor camera system if you don't already have one in your facility. And in the images above, you can see the results of the LED upgrade that we did in one of our own sites. And it is impressive to see that the LED upgrade delivers a better lighting quality even when the lights are dimmed. Note that the areas with stronger illumination in the picture result from the reflection of the LED lights in the floor, which is captured by the photo cameras, but not visible to the human eye. In this chart, you can see how the LED upgrade in the external parking lot delivered a much superior lighting distribution. In the picture to the left, you have the HID lights with several heat spots. And in the picture to the right, you can see the uniform lighting distribution that is generated by the LED upgrade. And here's another case study we did with Steelscape, one of our key customers. In this case, they not only upgraded the entire facility to LED, but they also added controls to manage the indoor and the outdoor environments from a single screen. And here you can see Steelscape's facility manager controlling the entire lighting of his site from the comfort of his office, just rolling like a pro. If you would like to receive a free copy of this case study with the products implemented and the savings and the results, just click yes on your screen and we will send it to you in the next 24 hours. This is one of the most important slides in this presentation. In this chart, you have the six control techniques that can take your energy savings and your operational control to the next level. Now, this is a very broad topic. It deserves a full webinar of its own, so I will not be able to go into a great level of detail in each one of these techniques in this webinar just because we don't have enough time to do so. But before the end of the webinar, we will offer you a free e-guide that you can download and study on your own at your own pace and get more familiar with each of these controls strategies. So for this webinar, I'll walk you through three of these control techniques. It is also important to mention that different control techniques can yield different percentages of energy savings depending on where and how they are implemented. So you have there underneath each of the boxes the potential for energy savings of each one of these. And uh, just to give you an example, occupancy sensing is a very effective, a very basic technique that works very well in most environments. But if you have a production line and you put occupancy sensors close to that production line, the movement of goods could trigger 
the occupancy sensors and that would not be ideal. So maybe in a production line environment, you can combine daylight harvesting and task tuning and load shedding. That, of course, depends on the layout and what you're producing. But the, the point is, this is a complex topic. It has to be well studied. You need the help of experts to select the best strategy. So please download our e-guide. And when you're ready to implement, give us a call, and we'll help you with that process. So let's start with one of the most basic but still most effective lighting control strategies, occupancy sensing. Occupancy sensing is very common in office spaces and it's gaining a lot of momentum in industrial environments as well. And it can save you lighting energy up to 55%, depending on the environment and the traffic that you have there. Uh, occupancy sensing basically uses sensors to program your lights to dim or shut down when certain areas of the facility are unoccupied instead of leaving the lights on 24-7. Uh, the types of occupancy sensors available are passive infrared technology, which detects human body temperature, and you also have microphonics, which use a built-in microphone to capture the sounds that indicate occupancy in a given environment. And in my experience, Passive infrared tends to work better in warehouses and industrial facilities because those environments tend to have constant noise levels that may reduce the effectiveness of microphonics. Daylight harvesting is one of my favorites. It is very awesome. It works through the use of photosensor controls that send signals to dim or turn off electric lights based on existing natural light levels. Uh, it can reduce energy consumption up to 45%, which is very interesting, while maintaining consistent high-quality illumination from the sun through windows or skylights. Now, like everything in life, there is the best way of doing it and the not-so-good way of doing it. So take a look at the pictures in the screen and see the difference in the quality of illumination from an amateur daylight harvesting attempt on the left in a properly installed Synoptics Signature Series on the right. The Signature Series is UV protected. It has different models with impact modified acrylic to withstand hurricanes, tornadoes, and other natural disasters. It has a fully welded frame that prevents separation due to the expansion and contraction generated by changing temperatures. And in addition, it comes with integrated condensation gutters and external weeping gutters that are pitched away from the interior and provide redundant moisture management just to keep your facility safe and dry at all times. Now, if you have gone down the path of installing some fiberglass panels in your facility and it's looking like the picture to the left of the screen, don't worry because we have a perfect solution for you. It's called Synoptics Easy Curb. And this solution is designed especially for installation in metal roofs. And it provides a very nice glare-free illumination, as you can see in the before and after picture to the right. It is also very easy to install. It takes about a fifth of the time to install than a traditional curb, and it can be installed by a roofer, so it's very easy to install. Not only that, it is also a safer solution because it reduces the chances of someone stepping into a fiberglass panel and falling through the roof. So it's a very nice, affordable product that you can easily install, and it will make your facility look much better. All right, now let's talk about load shedding. Load shedding reduces energy usage temporarily either automatically based on a pre-programmed demand response signal or manually. And it is a way to selectively reduce the load of a system to avoid times of peak energy pricing. So think about summertime when demand for air conditioning outpaces a utility's available energy. Or mid-afternoon hours, for example, might be the ideal time for dimming the lights to reduce the energy drain. So load shedding is a perfect match for an industrial LED upgrade project, in my opinion, because if you're upgrading from HID to LED lights, 
chances are that you will see such a dramatic improvement in the quality of illumination from start that even if you dim temporarily your LED lights, you will still have a much brighter and well illuminated facility. So it is a win-win. I definitely recommend you investigating this control strategy for your facility. So this was a quick overview of three of our favorite lighting and HVAC control strategies. But if you want to learn more about this interesting topic of controls and really take your facility to the next level, just click yes on the button below and we will send you our latest e-guide about industrial controls. And hopefully this resource will be useful as you consider your LED upgrade. The technology that brings it all together and enables you to control your industrial facility from a single screen is called X-Point Wireless. And the first thing that makes this lighting control solution ideal for industrial applications is that it is a wireless system. Because running a Cat5 cable through a very large industrial site can be very expensive and very complex to implement. So the X-Point Wireless is a very flexible lighting control system that enables you to do all the control strategies that we described in this presentation, from occupancy sensing, daylight harvesting, load shedding. It is a truly robust and customizable solution. It can be integrated with acuity controls, the end light to be more specific, so that you can control the indoor and the outdoor parts of your facility. And another feature that makes the X-Point Wireless unique is that it is compliant with the UL924 code. So in case of an emergency where the site power is moved to the generator, the X-Point Wireless allows you to override the original programming and take control of the facility lighting without the need to rewire all your fixtures with a bypass relay. And that should save you a good amount of money in installation costs. So it is a truly robust and customizable solution for industrial applications. Now, oftentimes customers ask me if it is possible to implement all these control strategies in demanding environments. And the answer is yes, but with a few precautions. There are two things that could get in the way. Very high ceiling altitudes and also very high ambient temperature. So let's take it one at a time. With regards to ceilings, if the fixtures have to be mounted above 40 feet, you have to take some precautions because the, the sensors will lose their accuracy if they're mounted at a distance of 40 feet or more from the area you want to monitor. So the way to get around that is you have to, ma you have to mount your sensors in the walls of the facility and that will increase the complexity of the installation by a little bit but it is certainly still worth it because the savings that you're going to get are far more attractive right in addition to that you have to add a repeater device that will be positioned to receive the signals from the wireless bridge and retransmit them to the fixtures that are mounted at the very high ceilings now with regard to the high ambient temperatures as we discussed before, this could impair some electronic devices, specifically the wireless bridge. The wireless bridge cannot be exposed to ambient temperatures above 122 degrees Fahrenheit for an extended period of time. So all you have to do is position the wireless bridge in certain environments where you can make sure that the temperature will not exceed 122 degrees Fahrenheit for an extended period of time. And of course, the LED light fixtures must also be rated to operate in very high uh, temperatures. And in the case of the Fusion PHC, which I presented to you earlier in this presentation, it is certainly up for the task. As we approach the end of the webinar, I wanted to show you how it all comes together from a financial perspective. In the chart in the screen, you will find a payback simulation for an industrial LED upgrade project, including the implementation of wireless controls. The assumptions are listed in the right side of the chart, but this would be a typical mid-sized project for us. In other words, it is not a very complex implementation. And as you can see in the bar chart, when we add the LED lights and the controls, savings the energy spent
spent with lighting can be reduced by up to 81%. And that should allow you to achieve a payback period of less than two years, 23 months to be more precise, even if you do not have utility rebates available in your area. Now, if you have utility rebates in your area, the payback period could drop to 18 months. That's a year and a half. So it's very attractive payback periods available. Lastly, I added an orange bar in the chart to reflect the potential savings from not having to replace HID high base at high ceilings, which tends to be a frequent problem as the HID fixtures start to age. But I did not factor this maintenance cost savings in the payback calculations because I wanted to be conservative, right? These costs can change depending if you have your own lift or if you rent it or if you use an OSHA supervisor. So just to be conservative, I did not factor in the cost savings with maintenance in the payback periods and it's still of two years or even less with utility rebates. So this is a very attractive financial value proposition. So the message here is very simple and it is very interesting. Even if you do not have an LED upgrade budgeted for this year or next year, you should still have no problem to justify one financially because with the current LED prices, the payback will happen in less than two years or even less if you have the utility rebates. Once you achieve the payback period, every dollar saved goes to the bottom line of your business and that is a pretty powerful thing to do, especially if you are in a competitive environment like most of us. Additionally, if you work with a company like Hall of Fame, we have financing, op financing options available, so it is really in your power to implement a project like this, make your facility safer, better to work at, and more cost competitive. All right, folks, this wraps it up for today. So let's go over the key concepts covered in this webinar. The benefits of upgrading demanding environments to LED include better light quality, which makes environments safer and better to work at, reduce the exposure to risky HID light replacement routines, and the elimination of replacement costs and energy savings of up to 65%. Before the controls, with the controls, 81%. LED lights engineered for demanding environment are built of high quality materials and should maintain 90% of rated illumination after 10 years of use. So look for lights that have lenses of borosilicate glass and use aluminum to dissipate the heat better. Specification sheets of serious providers should always guarantee the longevity of the lights and it should be and they should also should be rated by credible third party agencies so make sure you get a good light fixture a good LED light that will last for 10 years or more and also upgrading your outdoor areas and office spaces to LED can reduce your energy costs by another 10 to 40 percent so take advantage while the utility rebates last and just get your entire site upgraded at once uh, different control strategies will allow you to manage your lighting and HVAC from a single screen and reduce what is left of your energy spend by another 80 percent and lastly wireless controls can be implemented in demanding environments you just need to take the precautions that we went over in this webinar so these are the key concepts of today's webinar. If you would like to evaluate a lighting and controls upgrade for your demanding environment or your critical facility, please click yes on the screen right now and we will gladly put you in touch with an expert in your area that can help you with this process. So thank you very much one more time for attending our webinar. I hope you found this content useful and I hope these materials will help you make your facilities safer, better to work at, and more cost competitive. Take care, have a great rest of your day, and thank you one more time.